Audio jump. A group of civil society organizations has charged President Tunebo to construct an executive constitutional alteration on affirmative action as part of his restructuring policy to address the underrepresented groups in Nigeria. They said year in, women, youth, and persons with disabilities are continually marginalized despite the 35% affirmative action on gender representation in decision making. At a global rights intergenerational fireside dialogue titled Navigating the Civic Space and Advancing Inclusivity with Nigeria's New Administration, a panelist and development consultant, Jido Ojo, said the constitutional alteration will clearly define the rights of women and persons with disabilities in governance, adding that adequate preparation ahead of 2027 will enhance the country's law for inclusive governance. Section 42, we talks about non-discrimination. Non-discrimination, the court has ruled a federal court in 2022, April has ruled that there is gender discrimination in Nigeria. In the recently concluded 2023 general election, the Red Chamber of the 10th National Assembly had only three female elected out of the 109 seats, while the Green Chamber had 16 women out of the 360 lawmakers. However, going by this number of women representation, it would have been proper for President Tinubu to fulfill his campaign promise of 25% appointment of the female folks to balance the 35% affirmative action, but rather chose to appoint only seven in his cabinet. Informed of this fireside series seeking to address the shrinking civic space of Nigerian women and youth to engender participatory governance that captures the excluded groups in the current administration. In his view, the development consultant Jido Ojo urged the government to emulate the standardized form of political appointees for best practice. We have a constitutional alteration that articulates the rights of persons with disability, youth, and women, in which case we can then start enforcement by the next general elections. And the time to start is now. We need to tinker with our laws to ensure inclusion of the vulnerable and underrepresented, uh, underrepresented groups like women, youth, and persons with disabilities. The other thing I can flag is issue of training. Training is a principle where if a party chairman is a male, the vice chairman should be a woman. If, if a party secretary is a woman, the de deputy secretary or you know, assistant secretary should. That way, you, the same thing can be done for executive position. If a governor is a male, let the deputy be a female. If we have 36 female deputy governors, at the next election, two, three, five of them may be lucky to succeed their principal. So these are different measures we can take to increase women participation, but they must show commitment by registering to be members, by being members of the party executive, and then contesting during the party primaries for general elections. Also, Global Rights Program Manager Edosa Oviawe submitted that involving more women in crucial decision processes will help to address the nation's economic challenges and called for a revoke of the 35% affirmative action, which is also discriminatory for women, to have a balanced gender representation. If you are saying non-discrimination, then you should be talking about 50-50. I think that is what non-discrimination means. You cannot be in one breath say no discrimination, and another breath say give them 35%. That is not balanced. That's already discriminatory. And so uh, the way we are enforcing the federal character, we should be, we should be enforcing equal representation for everyone, women, persons with disability, and people living without disability, there should be that equal representation for everyone. Not you saying, okay, and just as I've been pointed out over time, some of our, our, our elites think they are doing women a favor, or they are doing people with disability a favor by trying to give them certain slots. For heaven's sake, it is their right as humans. On their part, a development expert, Naomi Erebo, and the head of office, Erich Boy Foundation Nigeria, Jokin Lokshada, said they are open to dialogue with the government 
to ensure that women and persons with disabilities are employed in decision making to summon the economic hardship for democratic equity and fairness. We're actually beginning to provide solutions now that require that people are on the tables where these decisions are made. You cannot be outside of policy making, you cannot be outside of decision making, you cannot be outside of the rooms where all of these conversations are had so that your voice is not there. And then when they come out with the solutions, we complain that, oh, nobody made um, 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 opportunities for us. So we need to be in those spaces, we need to be on those tables, and that's what um, you know, my work is doing now. So I'm focusing on getting more women into spaces where they can be part of conversations and part of decision making that actually prefer solutions that support every one of us. It will be necessary that very large policy decisions that have increased um, also economic hardship and the race question. So how do we move forward from here? How do we get out of this? Um, and uh, that's, I guess, where we're looking at government as an important actor to. Hopefully, have an inclusive conversation about how Nigeria can uh, move out of the economic uh, quagmire it is in and uh, provide a better future uh, for all of its citizens. These experts implore the underrepresented groups to institute a female political party, just as it is done in the youth party, to draw them closer to politics to end all forms of marginalization in the country. Vincent Okushi. Reporting for Quality Television. Audio